los cantos, hermana Heidi. Put me on the spot. <laughs> no, uh, so guys, just so you guys know, uh, Heidi is actually a worship singer. She's an amazing singer. She has a beautiful voice. And guys, she's single. No, uh, but you better watch out because uh, you got to go through me before you go to her. Um, yeah, so <laughs> she has a lot, a lot of people filtering all of you guys out because uh, she has a very special heart and she's such a beautiful sister in Christ. Um, so Heidi, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what church do you go to and what do you do at your church? So I am currently attending Iglesia de Dios Casa del Padre. At the moment, I am just in the worship ministry. Um, I was um, a while back, not a while back, but just a few months back, a teacher for the kids ministry and in the danza group. Mm, the dance team? Yes, the dance nice. team. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now your, your main focus has been with, with worship, right? Yes, worship. Oh, and I am a youth leader as well for my cellula. For your cell group. Yes. Nice, awesome, okay. And uh, how long have you been leading worship? Oh, leading worship, um, I think almost, wow, three, three years. Three years. And how about a cell group leader? Cell group leader? Oh, a while. Maybe like five, five to six years. Five to six years. Wow. And by the way, guys, if you guys ever want to uh, hear uh, Haiti lead worship, or you guys are interested <laughs> in going to her, her yeah. cell group for Bible study or anything like that, or maybe you're just looking for prayer. Uh, we're going to yes. leave all the details down below so that you guys can reach out to her and yes. other things that we'll be talking about in today's podcast because it's going to be really special. We have so much coming up, guys. Um, but, Haiti, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how do you come to Jesus? How, what is your testimony? So, um, I grew up in a Christian household, you could say, because my mom would always bring me to church and I would always go ever since I was little. But what really got me closer to God was actually the worship ministry um me being in the band and mm. it started off with me just being there just because you know um, my cousin was there and I just had that you know reason to go see her and to just try something out because I like to sing I really love to sing but <laughs> when I would um <laughs> when I would go to the altar and I actually had those moments of worship I I was like wait this is more than just singing this is actually like feeling the presence of God and mm and worshiping him and honoring him through my voice, through me singing. And so that's when I actually began to get that relationship with God is through the worship ministry and through singing. Hmm. Yeah. That, that's powerful. I, I like that. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people shy away from going to church or from uh, having faith, right, in God. And mm -hmm. I think it's really important, as you were saying earlier, when you were struggling with, like, anxiety and even with depression, how yeah. prayer has played a powerful role. Yes, now, definitely. but with, with that said, um, how does how does having anxiety and, and or having had anxiety and then now dealing with depression, how does that play a factor when you are in church? Do you ever find it, like, um, affecting you while you're at service? Like, does it ever distract you from being present or anything like that? So, uh, with the anxiety back then, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't even allow me to go to church. That's how bad it got. But wow. when I would go to church, I remember I would go on Tuesday nights for prayer. And it, was, it started off with just me, like, quietly mumbling to myself in prayer just there. Because I was too embarrassed to express myself. Because when you're going through that really harsh, um, dark pit, um, you just feel like, you know, you don't want to, you know, scare people away. Hmm. But then it came to a point where I was like, I came to a point where I was praying. I was actually like crying out loud. Like, <laughs> like I, I look crazy, but I was like, you know what? God is hearing my prayer and God always hears your prayers. And mm -hmm. that's what had affected me at church was just the way I pray to God. I was like, you know what? I shouldn't care what people think when I'm praying or the way I express myself, because this is about me and God, my relationship with God. Um, I'm not here um, going to church for anybody else, you know? Oh, yeah. And with the depression, um, the way it would affect me, I guess, today, um, there was just moments of um, lack of motivation where I would tell myself, be like, well, what's the reason why I should go to church? Like, what's really keeping me? Um, what is keeping me from going? You know, what what is the reason why I want to go to church? And again, it's like holding on to that purpose that I know that God has, not only for me, but I know for the life of many youth that there's so many youth out here that have many talents, whether it be with singing or with serving, they can be an usher, multimedia, you know, having that understanding of technology, you know, that's what helped me during my depression <laughs> is having that stability in the worship ministry is just having that, you know, that feeling of, I do have a promise from God and I have a purpose mm. here at church and knowing that you have a purpose not only at church, but, you know, in your life, um, 
that's what has helped me. Even though I, it was affecting me at church, I was overcoming it with wow. the things. Yeah. No, that that's really good, Haiti. I think it's really really cool that while you're connected, while right, while you still engage or, or you stay engaged in different serving um, at the church, I think it's really important to uh, also help people understand when you're connected to a church. Think of it like um like an outlet in a room. You know that if you put your finger in there, there's power in there. But in order for you to feel that power or in order for you to get power out of there, you have to connect something in there, right? And so the best way to know whether or not the, the church has power is to stay connected. You got to stay connected to the place. It might be down the street from your house. It might be a church that friends or family has invited you to go to. But I encourage all of you guys that are watching, go to church. Stay connected to a church. Um, Haiti, what about a Bible verse that really stands out to you that's probably helped you go through depression? Oh, a Bible verse to help me through depression. Or even anxiety. Mm -hmm. There's so many. I don't know quote by quote, but it's the one where it says um, that the peace um, that surpasses all understanding mm. um, brings yep. so much joy. And there's another verse that says, like, just like it, it made me feel like free in a sense where it mentioned, like, we are like an eagle that soars out his its wings just out of freedom just having that liberty i really yeah. like that verse because no i like that yeah, yeah yeah no go ahead go ahead yep because it just um yeah i just wanted to say like yeah it, it really <laughs> helped me because i was like i just imagined myself in that perspective i was like i am the eagle where like through all of these challenges like I'm like, well, I'm flying and I'm soaring and I'm free from all of this. Yeah. Fly, hey, fly. <laughs> <laughs> fly, little bird. <laughs> no, that, that's cool, dude. Yeah. I, I like that. And, and you know what? There's a lot of verses in scripture that really anchor us down in our faith. And it lets us know that even if the storms come by, yes. um, we'll, be, we'll be steadfast, the Bible says. We'll remain strong. We'll persevere, right? And it seems like perseverance has really been a threat throughout this conversation. Yeah. It helps us persevere in different ways. And, um, Haiti, would you mind or would you feel comfortable talking about purity? Purity, yeah. Yeah? Oh my yes. gosh. I'm excited for this. Okay, yes. so <laughs> for those of you that don't know, um, if you've been living under a rock, Patrick style, we have been living in a culture where it seems like if, if you're 14, you haven't had sex yet, it's like you're, you're a bad person. Right. And by the way, if you have, I don't want to put you in shame. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not here to make you feel guilty or bad or anything like that. But what I am here to tell you is that don't follow what culture tells you. Culture is not, um, well, first of all, it's not God's word for your life. It's so immoral. And it, it shows you things that are not really meant for you. Yeah. And so I know that's very controversial. I know that's one of those hot topics that we face in, 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 in culture today. But that's exactly my point. Why is it that people guarding their virginity or their purity, why does that have to be such a controversial thing? Why is that yeah. seen as such a bad thing? I remember I was in a social work class one time. And I told them, oh, yeah, you guys should read my book, this and that and the other. And this student was like, well, it's too preachy. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's not preachy at all. It's like literally all romantic poetry. Yeah. Well, you encourage youth to, to, to guard their purity. I'm like, look, just because I encourage youth to guard their purity doesn't mean it's a religious thing. There's plenty of people yeah. that are atheists, that are agnostic, that, are, that practice different forms of religion, um, or that don't practice a religion at all, that believe that guarding your purity is such an important thing. And I am very privileged to know that Haiti is an amazing example that it is possible. Haiti, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Do you ever get like comments like, girl, you should have been already done it? Or like, like <laughs> um, what, what has that been like? Or do you find like more guys are probably attracted to you because of the fact that you've been able to guard your purity so long? Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot. So just... <laughs> um there's a lot of points that i can oh, yeah. give at the moment yep. but um there are temptations that have come into my life and i'm not gonna lie i have failed but i have you know because us as humans have that flesh um within us that you know we suffer with temptations we suffer with you know craving um stuff that you know we're not supposed to yet like mm -hmm. and i don't want people to think that sex is bad you know no, it's no it isn't bad it's a gift from god but it's a gift from God to be held for marriage. It's like, mm. and what I told some of my friends, I was like, you know, as a gift, it's something special, right? You're going to save it for a special day. You're going to save it for mm. somebody special. So why is sex different than that? No, it's a gift from God. And you can't just, you know, give it to anybody or you can't just, you know, it's something like that. It's similar to any other gift, right? And um, like I said, um, I'm human. 
I'm human. Well, yes. <laughs> and I, at least that we know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so far, that's what we know. <laughs> yes. No, I am human. I promise. Yes. <laughs> and I have, um, I have battled with temptations and I slipped up, not in the way where I have had, um, sexual intimacy, but, um, things that could have led to that. And, mm. um, my pieces of advice is if there is anybody or anything that is keeping, like trying to provoke you into potentially like leading to that point where they do, um, want to sleep with you, um, I recommend to flee, um, to, to leave because like I said, we are just incapable as human beings to, to control uh, our fleshly desires. We can't, we have self-control. That's another thing too that I learned is that we do have self-control. Like I've learned that about myself is that, yes, I, while I was going through the temptations, I was like, well, I have self-control and mm. I didn't allow things to lead to that point. But, you know, it also depends on who you're with, right? Because if they don't want to cooperate with you, if they don't have that same mentality as you, it, it's not good for you. It's not good for you because as much self-control um, that you you might have and you believe you have, you know, it's just better in general to avoid temptations, to avoid, well, you can't avoid temptations, like I said, because we're humans, but mm -hmm. to avoid situations that can lead to temptations and to lead anything further than that. But again, it's like, I learned that purity is the most amazing gift that you can have because um, waiting for that special someone um, in your life that I know is going to be God sent, um, it's just something to look forward to because, you know, um, just having that same uh, individual, your partner that has the same mentality as you, morals as you, being Christ centered. Um, and having respect for you because mm. when a person has respect for you, that is more attractive than anything. Right. Because like, having that simple respect of your boundaries and understanding your boundaries, it's, it's the most amazing thing, right? You oh, don't yeah. want to be with somebody that pushes your physical boundaries or, mm. or any type of boundaries because, you know, like I said, um, temptations will come. But if any individual is trying to push your boundaries, you should know that it's not going to be good for any of you, for both of you. No, you're right, Haiti. And, and often I hear a lot of guys, um, and even girls, right? I, I've heard it's happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where girls might tell me like, Danny, we're going to get married anyways. And I'm like, mm. oh, I know that straight up Satan. Um, yep. <laughs> you know, but like, it, but it happens, no. right? We hear those comments like, oh, you know, you're going to get married anyways. Or no. I love you. Or like, well, then why do you lead me this far if we're not gonna even going to do anything? Like, yeah. there's so many things that people out there will tell you. And, and yeah. a lot of youth even call, I, I remember being in high school and I even saw a lot of guys and a lot of guys still do this. Like, oh, virgin, virgin. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad I'm a virgin, buddy. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. glad I'm not like sleeping around like you are. <laughs> like. Yeah. I don't care if you call me a virgin. Yeah. That's actually a compliment. That's a good thing. Yes. Um, and so, and Haiti, why don't we wrap up this part of the session? Um, yeah. Why don't you tell us what would be a worship song that has been in your heart this season of your life? Oh, this season of my life. I was just listening to a song called Hermoso Momento. Because hmm. um, another in English, it's translated as um, Beautiful Moment. Do you know by who? Uh, what's her name? I do not know her name. Okay. Uh, yeah. But um We'll find it later. It's yes, all good. <laughs> we'll find it. <laughs> and I feel like just that song um allowed me to be in the presence of God. And it's just describing how the beautiful moment that we have with God, that we don't um we don't need to depend on anybody else um to make us feel loved and to feel um loved. You know, it's only God that is well God and other people that are there supporting you, but God is really there for you in his presence. Wow, I love that. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. And if you guys are interested in finding out what song that is, or if you already know what the name of the song and the yeah. artist is, why don't you let us know in the comments down below? Um, Haiti, thank you so much for sharing about yeah. the purity thing. I, I really think yeah. that's one of the things that really impact our culture today. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are somebody that it's like, I, I still have my purity, but like I'm, I'm really struggling and I'm in a relationship, and my my boyfriend's telling me that if I really love him, then I have to do this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, take Haiti's word and, and take yeah. God's word with you, and yeah. and know that it is possible to say no. 
know. Yes. Know that it is possible to flee a relationship that doesn't belong to you. It's not yours. And why would God put you in a relationship and marry you to somebody that doesn't even honor your boundaries exactly. outside of marriage, right? Yeah. And I believe, as, as Haiti said, sex is a beautiful thing, guys. God made sex, but he made it for the context of marriage. Once it's outside of that, yeah. it tears apart families, friends, relationships, people. And so with that yeah. said, guys, we're going to go into our next session and we're going to be talking about uh, Haiti's business because it's an amazing venture that she's gotten into. It's been yes. flourishing in amazing and beautiful ways. So we'll be right back.